Hey everyone, it's Raji from Figma again with another episode of Figma in 5. This is our third episode. And this is about auto layout. And I like to think about Figma in 5 a lot like Keanu Reeves when he gets jacked into the matrix and he downloads a program and he knows Kung Fu. So that's what we're gonna try to do for you with auto layout today in Figma. Let's go. Let's talk about the auto layout basics. I can select two objects and simply hit add auto layout, or I can use the key combo shift A to add auto layout frame to this button. Now under the alignment panel here, I can actually vertically align all of my child objects. I can change my button appearance here and to create something that looks a little bit more like a button. Now in my auto layout settings here, I can also add padding. So here's a 16 pixel padding button. And as I begin to type into it, you'll see the magic of auto layout. Awesome. Let's say I actually drew a rectangle as my background for my button, and then I've got some objects on top of it. If I simply select all three and hit Shift A, Figma's smart enough to know that the item behind it actually becomes the button background. Now in the same way, we can apply our alignment settings and to create a flexible button for ourselves. Let's see what else we can do with auto layout. Uh, we could change our direction from vertical to horizontal. We can also change our spacing in between each child element of the auto layout frame, as well as adjust the padding all around. New to Figma is the ability to change independent padding. So I can add eight pixels on the top and the bottom and 16 on the left and right. Another great little shorthand tip for you to know is that you can actually type in those values into the field comma separated. So say I want 16 on the top, 32 on the right, 16 on the bottom and 32 on the left. I can just type that in and it'll translate to the padding panel. Okay, we're gonna try to make this menu here, but use auto layout for everything. Currently, we just have a bunch of objects on the screen and that's not good enough. We wanna use the powers of auto layout. So I'm gonna take this home icon and this text and I'm gonna hold shift A and that's gonna add auto layout to it. Now, let's put it at four, four pixels spacing in between. We're gonna put this to centered vertically. All right, let's do a little bit more of a complicated example. So I've got this list and it's set to vertical auto layout. It's working if I duplicate the components within it, it actually responds vertically, which is great. Uh, my biggest problem here though, is that the components inside for the two do items are not set to auto layout. So let's go add auto layout to them now. First thing we're gonna do is just add auto layout to it. Now it changed a few things and messed a few things up. So we're gonna have to fix those. Let's align it vertically. The other thing we want to do on these items is we want them to actually fill the container horizontally. So right now they're all set to fill container on the horizontal, which is perfect. Let's check this text by holding command and clicking on that text. We can see that that text was set to a fixed width. We'll change it to a fill container and now everything should work. The checkbox is fixed width, fixed height. This text will fill up the complete container. And then of course, this to-do item in here is actually set to fill container. So it will fill the container. So let's resize this container and see if we've achieved what we want. This is perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. Because we now have independent padding, let's say I wanna indent this list here. I can simply just go into the three grocery items go into their padding and adjust the padding on the left-hand side to have an indented list. Now I've used the same component, but overridden the padding settings on it to create this indented list. You can see we've got a horizontal auto layout cat pile here. And as we add those kitties, uh, it works as we'd expect. Now, if we decide to change the size of this, we can now have auto layout with a fixed width. But how do we change the distribution of these kitties? If we come under here, we can change it to space between. It'll actually distribute the space between these cats. We can actually use this to create something like a face pile effect, and we can still move these objects around in between. I'm designing a dialog box here, and I'd like to bring in some close buttons. The first option I'd like to try is to put in this close button here. Now in our header, I've set it to horizontally auto layout with 32 pixels padding and to fill the container on the X axis. Now an easy way to pull this off would be to go change the distribution settings to space between. You can see now that this close button is exactly where I want it to be. My only issue with this layout is because this text here is set to hug horizontally, it'll just keep on going off the screen. The way to fix this would be to go into this text and set it to fill the container. Then it'll fill up all the available horizontal space. We'll left align it and then we'll try adding more text again like we did before. We can see now that it's wrapping exactly how we'd like it to wrap. 
Now, what if we wanted to have a close button in this upper right position? This is a little bit harder for auto layout, but I'm gonna show you a trick on how to do this. We're gonna take this close button and put it in this frame. Now, dragging and holding space, I'm gonna reposition that close button to the upper right. Holding space allows me to keep it in the frame without it falling out of the frame. Now what we'll wanna do is make sure that we set our constraints to right and top for that button, and we'll test it right here. Okay, it's resizing perfectly. Let's take that frame and drag it into this dialog box. We're gonna set the horizontal fill to fill container. Now let's just test and see if this works as well. This is working perfectly, except for the fact that this frame is 32 pixels high. I'd like it to effectively take up zero. So I'm gonna type in zero. Well, zero doesn't work in Figma, so there's a Zero height frame hack that works like this. If you type in 0.001, it'll actually round down to zero. And now we effectively have that zero height frame that enables us to do this complex layout of this button, but it still responds to the container. And one last trick for you today is how can you pull off minimum width or minimum height with an auto layout container? Well, the secret here is that with a button, I've set it to be a vertically auto layout button and I've added a frame inside of it. Now that frame is a lot like our last example where we had that zero height frame. I've got this frame set to 150. And what this enables me to do is still have a button that has hug contents on the horizontal, but as soon as you add text, it actually allows for that button to expand. Hope you have a great day and I hope these tricks have been amazing for you. And that's it for this episode of Figma in 5. Hope you learned a ton. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to keep this content coming. Have a great day.